Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for coming. Uh, also, thank you for being flexible with your schedules, understanding the uh, significant uh, weather event that we're anticipating uh, later this week. Um, uh, Chief of Police Ron Thomas uh, here with Major Crimes Division Commander Matt Clark here to provide uh, additional follow-up uh, briefing with some more details uh, in relation to a critical incident that occurred a couple of Fridays ago, uh, March 1st. Um, in which uh, uh, officers confronted an armed individual who appeared to be presenting uh, imminent deadly threat to an individual and unfortunately that individual was killed. I want to take a moment to acknowledge the loss of life and certainly send condolences to the family of that individual. Um, We will uh, certainly open ourselves up for questions uh, following the briefing, but at this time I'll turn it over to Commander Clark. Good afternoon, I'm Matt Clark, uh, the commander of the Denver Police Department's Major Crimes Division. I appreciate you being here and give us an opportunity to provide additional information uh, related to the officer-involved shooting that occurred Friday, March 1st, around 6.50 p.m. at 450 North Federal Boulevard. This is intended to be a follow-up briefing based upon information we've gathered after interviewing witnesses, speaking with the involved officers, and analyzing evidence that was collected at the scene. Uh, There may be information, just since we're early on in this investigation, that I may not be able to answer, but to the degree we're able to do so, I'll address any questions um, after giving a narrative summary of the incident. On Friday, March 1st, 2024, around 6.50 p.m., the Denver Communications Center received multiple 911 calls uh, regarding an incident occurring at the 7-Eleven convenience store at 450 North Federal Boulevard. The multiple callers reported either a stabbing and or a robbery in progress occurring at the location. Uniformed Denver police officers arrived at the location within minutes and were informed by customers who were outside of the store that two employees were being held by a subject in the office area directly behind the sales counter. Customers also advised the officers that the individual had a knife. An officer entered the store. Uh, He moved around the sales counter. When he got to the back side of the counter, he observed the subject briefly open the door to the office. Uh, from the inside. The officer gave specific direction for that individual to put his hands in the air. He did not comply, but instead closed the door. Additional officers arrived to assist. They verbally identified themselves as Denver police officers. They were uniformed officers, uh, and they attempted to communicate with the subject through the door. The officers made certain the store was clear of any customers or anyone else uh, who could be in jeopardy as they worked to gain compliance from the subject. They gave the subject specific direction to open the door and lay on the ground. The officers from the outside uh, of the office could hear commotion going on inside and what sounded like an escalating disturbance in the office. The office door had a small uh, square window in the center of it and through that door an officer was able to uh, see inside and believed he saw the offender uh, subject uh, holding a knife to one of the employees. Based upon the danger the officers believed that the employees were in, they initiated efforts to force entry into the locked office to secure and ensure the safety of the employees. The door to the office was metal and it was reinforced with a metal frame. So attempts to kick the door were not successful. Officers repeatedly struck the door with a metal ram and were able to slightly open it. The officers discovered the subject had intentionally blocked the door from the inside using a desk and a computer. With the door, uh, excuse me, so they, the officers uh, then pushed the door open to the point where they could see uh, partially inside the room. And when they did that, they observed uh, the subject holding one of the two employees hostage. That subject was holding the employee with his left hand and holding a sharp object to the victim's neck and, and appeared to be pushing that into his neck. The officers also heard the subject making statements indicating he was going to stab the employee. The officers feared the subject um, was stabbing, using the object to stab the clerk uh, in the neck and believe he'd be seriously injured or killed. In order to prevent this and prevent significant injury to the uh, employee victim, four Denver police officers simultaneously discharged their firearms at the subject, striking him multiple times. The subject dropped the object and fell backwards into a chair that was directly behind him. Both of the employees then ran from the office and were escorted out of the store by officers. An ambulance was already on scene based upon the initial call regarding a stabbing 
and was there to assess and assist. The subject was evaluated by paramedics and was immediately transported to an area hospital where he was pronounced deceased. Both victims were evaluated on scene by paramedics. The employee who was held hostage by the subject uh, described having significant pain but having a relatively minor visible injury to his neck. He did not require transport to a hospital or further medical treatment and the other employee was not injured. The Denver Office of the Medical Examiner identified the subject as 43-year-old Christopher Couch, and that's spelled C-A-U-C-H. Investigators learned that at around 4.30 on March 1st, Mr. Couch carjacked a vehicle in Lakewood. Agents from the Lakewood Police Department briefly chased that vehicle, but quickly canceled their pursuit due to the uh, reckless driving by Mr. Couch. At approximately 6.48 p.m., the subject drove the stolen vehicle westbound on 5th Avenue in Denver at a high rate of speed before entering the 7-Eleven parking lot at Federal and 5th Avenue. Mr. Couch hastily parked his vehicle in front of the store with one of the uh, wheels, specifically the front driver wheel, up on the sidewalk and left the vehicle running. Mr. Couch entered the store holding an object that several customers believed was a knife. He immediately jumped over the counter into an area where the store employee was working. Mr. Couch threatened the employee with the object in his hand and physically forced that individual into the back office. Another employee uh, was working in the office at that time and was also held in the back office. The suspect closed the door, at which point multiple people began calling 911. In total, four separate 911 calls were received by the Denver Communication Center reporting this incident. At the scene, detectives recovered a small hand tool that had a six and a half inch metal shaft with a head similar to a device that is used to uh, pull a nail. Uh, this was the object that Mr. Couch was pushing into the clerk's neck. Investigators determined the four officers fired a combined total of 36 rounds. These rounds were all fired in just under five seconds. Three officers discharged their duty handgun and one officer discharged a department approved rifle. The officers who discharged their weapons were in uniform and are assigned to the patrol division within the department. One officer holds the rank of a corporal who's been with the department since 2017 and that officer has not been in a prior police shooting incident. Two of the officers are uniformed patrol officers who have been with the department since 2019. One of those officers was involved in a police shooting incident in 2023. And the other officer started with the department in 2020 and has not been involved in a prior incident. The body-worn cameras the officers were wearing were activated. Those cameras captured the interaction with the subject as well as the shooting uh, incident that occurred. The involved officers are in a modified duty status at this point as they complete the department's reintegration program. As with all of our critical incidents, the investigation of this incident is a combined effort with the Colorado Bureau of Investigations, the Colorado State Patrol, the department's homicide unit, and the Denver District Attorney's Office. The investigation is overseen by the Office of the Independent Monitor. I would ask that uh, while we've conducted a number of in interviews um, and spoken to a number of people, we've processed the scene, if there's anybody who witnessed this incident or has additional information, that they contact the Denver Police Department or Crime Stoppers at 720-913-STOP. Briefly show some slides. Um, the department has released um, surveillance video that was captured in the office, as well as um, two of the body-worn cameras that captured uh, video of the incident. Um, I'll just for context provide uh, some screenshots from some of those uh, cameras angles so you can uh, we can address any questions or if you choose not to watch the video this will provide some context. <clears throat> Mr. Couch arrives at the store um, at approximately 648. This is a still shot of him uh, going into the store. There's other people inside the store, other customers and the employees are inside at this point. The vehicle that's at the far end uh, the top of the screen is the vehicle that was carjacked in Lakewood uh, about two and a half hours prior. It is still running and it's parked up on the sidewalk area. They're not in a space. Mr. Couch is entering and in his right hand he has an object that is later described by several witnesses being a knife. Without any hesitation or delay, Mr. Couch jumps in uh, with customers at the desk with a clerk behind the desk uh, serving those customers jumps onto the counter and over the counter. As you can see, multiple uh, patrons inside the 7-Eleven store at that point. In very short order, uh, he moves, again, moves him to the back. Once the officers are able to force the door, 
This picture gives a sense of the confined space that existed within that office and some of the items that were present. The computer desk uh, had been moved from its original location uh, farther away and was positioned to block the door. And this was just one of the obstacles that the officers had to navigate as they worked to enter the room. There are a number of cords and other things that are a barrier for these officers that are coming in. Uh, coming through the door is a police officer holding a, uh, a, a department approved rifle and several officers with handguns from this position. They're able to have a clear view. Uh, the victim employee has, has, is attempting to get away as they describe. The offender is holding on to the, the subject with one hand and his right hand is pushing that, that hand tool into the individual's neck. There's separation. The officers are in very close proximity and fired their rounds um, over the course of a very brief amount of time, just under five seconds there. The item that we recovered, um, it's not, it's not, it's, it's similar to a, a screwdriver type uh, size, but it has a different head. Again, the best I can describe is it's potentially something that would be used to pull a nail, um, about a six and a half inch uh, device there. If there's any questions, we can address them. You said 36 shots? Yes, sir. And were all, did all of those shots hit the subject? Um, I'm not certain that all hit the subject. Uh, there was some indication in the, in the backdrop that, that some of the rounds may have struck, may have not have impacted him, um, or some of those rounds may have gone through him potentially and impacted those. So I can't, I don't have an assessment and I don't have the medical examiner's report yet to determine um, how many times he was struck, but I know it was a majority of them. Okay. The way the video played out, um, it almost seems as if the subject was intending to get shot by police. Is that the you know, unfortunately, we'll never know the answer to that question. I think it's uh, maybe reasonable to assume, but, you know, honestly, we'll never know. There were other people in the uh, store, as we saw, as he was jumping over the desk. Can, can you elaborate on what they Yeah, did? so all of those individuals that you see um, in, the, in that original photo, they were on the outside of the desk um, or the, the counter. They all exited the store and those were the ones that informed the officer that the party was inside with a knife threatening the clerk. Um, the only uh, individual that was still left uh, in the store were, were just those two victims, the, the one store clerk that was in immediate danger and then the other one that was kind of hiding behind. Was there anybody else in the vehicle? The no, no, he was by himself. Okay. 